Here they are, the Quiz Kids, presented by the makers of Alka-Seltzer. We're on the air with the School Kids Questionnaire. Well, folks, here we are back in school with the Quiz Kids. Five shining faces and ten sparkling eyes appearing over the desktop, all attention to those questions you listeners sent in. The questions you know are selected by Sidney L. James of the editorial staff of Time and Life magazine and are never heard or hinted at before we go on the air. The examination is competitive, and only the three quiz kids with highest scores will be invited back next Wednesday night. Comes now our chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. Thank you, Fort Pearson, and welcome to our classroom, ladies and gentlemen. Well, friends, the subjects tonight range from baseball to bacteriology. The youngsters have absolutely no knowledge of what's coming, so anything can happen. And now then, I'll introduce our star students, and we'll get going. Van? My name is Van Dyke Sears. I'm 14, and I'm a senior at Thornton Township High School, Harvey, Illinois. Gerard? I'm Gerard Darrow. I'm nine years old. I'm in fifth grade at Bradwell School. And Emily Ann. I'm Emily Ann Israel. I'm 14 years old, and I'm a sophomore at South Shore High School. Those are the three out of five quiz kids who won out last week, friends. And challenging them tonight are two newcomers, Ruth. I'm Ruth Gloria Fisher. I'm 13, and I'm a freshman at Nutria Township High School. And Bob. I am Bob Lowner. I am 12 years old, and I am in the eighth grade at the Joyce Kilmer School. Now, I know all five of you kids will try hard for high marks tonight, but before we start the scoring, we're going to have a little session on sound effects. Fort Pearson, I'm going to ask you to identify this familiar sound for our radio audience. You ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's an Alka-Seltzer tablet fizzing in a glass of water. That's right, Ford. Good for you. That sound is really made by an Alka-Seltzer tablet in a glass of water. Yes, and folks, you might say that's the sound of comfort when you're suffering from a headache. It's Alka-Seltzer, a pleasant-tasting modern remedy that offers fast and effective relief not only for headache, but for cold distress, upset stomach, nervous indigestion, muscular aches and pains, and all those common everyday ailments that can make you feel so completely out of sorts. Just drop an alka seltzer in a glass of water. Watch it sparkle a few seconds while the tablet rapidly dissolves. Drink it down, and then you'll know why millions, yes, literally millions of American families consider alka seltzer a real friend in need. Remember, alka seltzer. Get it at any drugstore. Well, here we go. Question number one. Your first question comes from Dale Howard of Long Beach, California. How far does a phonograph needle travel while playing an ordinary 10-inch record? Two and a half inches, two and a half yards, or one half mile? Van? Well, I'd say about a half a mile. No, I'm sorry, well, Van. I, I, it must go more than two and a half yards. No. Well, may have that. Two and a half yards is... Oh, I guess it could go two and a half yards by seven feet. Well, no, I'm afraid in this particular instance you're wrong, Van. It would be two and a half inches. The needle only travels across the record, not around it. Get oh, the idea? <laughs> oh, that was a that was a doozer of a catch question, all right. <laughs> well, uh, don't uh, feel badly about that. We got a lot more questions here for all you kids. Now, Edward Weinstein of Trenton, New Jersey, sends us the names of three fictional villains. You are to name the heroes who bested them. The first is Professor Moriarty. Emily Ann. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, that's right. The next one is Fagin. Emily Ann. Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist. Good for you. And the third, Giant Despair. Emily Ann. That is the pilgrim of John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. Very, very good. That's nice going, Emily Ann. All right. Now, if you kids were to write a song, you could get the beat from a policeman, according to Mrs. Julia H. Berry of Detroit, Michigan. Now, what would you get from a locksmith? Ruth? Well, you'd probably get the key. The key, that's right. And uh, how about a realtor? 
a realtor. What would you get from him if you were writing a song? Gerard? You'd get a new house. <laughs> well, you're warm, Gerard. <laughs> Ruth? Well, uh, could it be the measure? No. Oh. Emily Ann? Well, when you got the title to your property, you could use it for yourself. <laughs> well, I think you've got something there. <laughs> that isn't exactly the answer I was asking for, though. Uh, uh, Robert? The staff? No, no. From a realtor, uh, you would get uh, a flat. Oh! <laughs> All right, here's another chance for you. How about a baseball game? What would you get from a baseball game? If you were writing a song, Ruth? You'd get the bass. <laughs> That's right. Good for you. Can anybody give me anything else on that one?